We all love the idea of being strong, resilient and invincible. We love to work on our strengths, finding recognition in it and feeling good about ourselves. However, human fragility is a reality we face in life. What happens when a big missile strike happens in the middle of our peaceful and good days? What happens when we are just too depleted and weary to stand against the toils we face? May Prophet Elijah's account give us insight and encouragement today. We all know the glorious and powerful story when Prophet Elijah challenged King Ahab's false prophets of Baal by sending down a rain of fire to consume the sacrifice before a great crowd. He was a bold and passionate servant of God. But in a turn of events, after Queen Jezebel's threat to kill him like the rest of the God's prophets, he was overwhelmed with fear. He fled for a long distance before he sat under a bush and prayed to die. In 1 Kings 19 verse 4, Elijah prayed, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Now what happened to his former unshaken boldness and trust in God's leading? It may seem that Elijah has a significant drop of faith into despair, but the reality of his fear and limitations should not be a surprise to the lot of us. In fact, he made a very human response. Having faced a great spiritual battle, he was now drained and feeling defeated from this long wrestle with King Ahab and Jezebel. So how will Elijah be delivered from such a dire plight? In hiding, fear, and depression. Now, there are much lessons we can learn from Prophet Elijah and God's character here in 1 Kings 19. Firstly, even though Elijah was in a despaired state, he still turned to speak to God. And he told God honestly about how he feels and how his faith was dwindling. Now in life, we will probably have our own moments where we have had enough. And Satan the accuser holds accusations, bitterness, hopelessness, and insinuations in us but he cannot take away the shelter we have in our God Most High. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 8 to 9 says, We are hard pressed on every side but not crushed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. By the grace of God, what he does does not depend on how capable or incapable we are. And these moments of despair are telling us one important thing. We are insufficient but only God is. We need God in every moment of our lives. Secondly, we see the restorative character of a loving father for his limited child. When we feel down, it is usually because we have some form of unrealistic expectations of ourselves, some form of perfection or strength that we cannot meet. And because of that, we dwell so much in those lack and thoughts of failures that we start to doubt God's works and forget his former grace and help. But God knows our limitations, and in Elijah's case, God responded to his distress signal with his gentle touch to first restore him. 1 Kings 19 verse 5 to 8 says, All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals, and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he travelled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb the mountain of God. God knows how much we can bear and what we need most in our valley moments. So he provides the right kind and portion of resources for us. Here, Elijah was worn down and weary. So God provided him first with the rest and the food supplies for nourishment so that he can move on to travel to the place God calls him to, Mount Horeb. In the darkest moments of our life, it challenges us to face our human limitations and our need for utter dependence on the Lord. It has a redeeming and restorative purpose. Finally, we see a God that partners and enables us in the best way understandable and doable for us. God showed that he knew just the way to reply to his very servant's confession of feeling defeated by three expressions. First, to remind Elijah of the power of the Lord he serves, God unleashed a great and powerful wind that shattered the rocks on the mountain. In the second expression, God sent an earthquake and then in the final expression, God sent a blazing fire. However, in verses 11 and 12, God was not in either of these mighty expressions, but God's voice only came to Elijah through a gentle whisper. God's message to Elijah was not in some big signs or wonders, but in the still, quiet voice of a loving father. Now we at times also seek for God by finding some big and obvious signs, but what could God be whispering into our hearts instead today? Is our God a God that merely wants to help us resolve our personal problems after problems? Or is there a greater reason that He wants us to move on and engage in the right direction or calling He has for us? After restoring and comforting Elijah, God did not let His servant be sidelined for too long. 
the Lord quickly commissioned Elijah to new work to push him into doing the next right thing. As you will read in the later part of 1 Kings 19, he was called to anoint kings, raise up his apprentice Elisha, and because Elijah said he was the only prophet left, God encouraged him that there are still 7,000 people who have refused to bow down to Baal. Sometimes, you and I, we too lose strength in our own fields, but God's power stands and can give us the portion we need to carry on for His purposes and glory. Brothers and sisters, God often allows His children little chances to recognize how much we are in need of His presence and help. As Psalm 103 verse 13 to 14 says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear Him. For He knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. God understands our limitations and supplies us accordingly. But we, however, have to really shed off the illusion we have on self-sufficiency, self-will and man-made strength. Today, do we trust that God has made us to be weak in all the right places and all the right reasons so that His glory and power can be remembered and manifested in our faith? How are we being drawn near to God through the revealing of our limitations? God calls us to seek Him and He sustains us as we do so. Let us, like Elijah, hear the Lord's gentle whisper in our weariness. God bless.